morning. What's going on, guys? So it's uh, Friday morning, and I just left the house. I'm driving to go get the car, and I'm going to be taking the drive shaft out of the car. So I wanted to shoot this quick video just to talk about some of the things that I've been doing to the car lately. So there's going to be some other episodes that you'll see um, before this video, hopefully. Um, that will go over the other things that I've already done to the car. What I'm working on right now, though, is troubleshooting some driveline vibrations. So for the last, basically, let's call it a week, I have been trying to track down this driveline vibration that I get right around you know 70 to 80 miles per hour. So um, this is a problem that um, you'll run into with a lot of live axle cars because with a live axle car, the differential is constantly moving, so you have a dynamic pinion angle. That driveline angle is always changing as the suspension articulates. So um, I have been you know, setting the angle of the output shaft, shimming the transmission, uh, shimming the rear differential to try and line up the output shaft with the, uh, and the pinion angle so that the two angles are parallel to each other. Even though these two uh, components are in different heights, so that the differential is lower than the transmission, um, you need to make these two angles parallel to each other so that they cancel each other out. Otherwise, you're going to get a vibration uh, in the drive shaft. So um, the diff is lower than the transmission. So it's, it's set right around zero, which I know is not normally correct. Usually, you know, you'll set it a couple degrees down because the, in a live axle car, the pinion tends to rise as you apply power and you normally don't want it to go um, beyond zero degrees or neutral. So finally, after having the angles set, you know, within a half a degree of each other, um, I decided to pull the drive shaft, take it to a drive shaft shop, and have it balanced. So I took it to a local shop. There's only one where I live, um, and it was way out of balance. The guy actually said the tube was warped, and he had to reheat the drive shaft tube to straighten it out. So um, I thought, hey, my problem's going to be fixed. But I get back in the car and I go out for a test drive after he rebalances the drive shaft. And the vibration, you know, changes from about 70 miles an hour and it's vibrating now at 80 miles an hour. So, same problem. So, what happens is, you know, I do some more troubleshooting thinking maybe it's, you know, driveline angles are still off, pinion angle, the, you know, the output shaft angle. And it's set perfectly and I'm at a loss as to why. So I actually ended up calling Curry Enterprises, which is, are the people who made you know, the rear differential and talking to them about driveline angles after I've already been doing my own research for a couple of weeks. And you know, basically they told me I've been doing the right thing and so the problem is probably the drive shaft. So I call the drive shaft shop back, the one that supposedly balanced my drive shaft, and I talk to the tech who did it and what he tells me is, well, your drive shaft was basically so bad, you know, like I said before, I had to heat the tube to try and straighten it, but what I would recommend is, I would still recommend you completely replace the drive shaft. And I'm going, well, why didn't you just tell me that when I gave you the drive shaft the first time instead of wasting my time and money trying to fix one that was unfixable? So, it's a drive shaft shop that normally does trucks. Trucks don't drive that, go that fast. I'm talking big trucks, like up to semi, like semi trucks, big rigs. And um, so, you know, he, it was balanced and good up to 80 miles an hour, which, you know, most trucks aren't going faster than that. But um, for my application, that didn't work. So he said, hey, I'll do you a favor, bring the drive shaft in this morning. Take me about three hours, I'll make you a new one. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going in, taking the drive shaft out. I'm also going to be upgrading to a three and a half inch drive shaft. Um, I'm sticking with a steel drive shaft, which is not what I want to do, but I'm kind of in a bind because I'm supposed to be at the track on Saturday. It's Friday. 
and I have no other solution. Otherwise, I miss the event. So he's gonna make me a steel three and a half inch drive shaft, and he's gonna make it from scratch. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we fix this problem. So I'll keep you posted. Um, I'm going to get the car now, I'll pull the drive shaft out, then I'm taking it to the shop. So stay tuned. All right guys, moment of truth. I'm exhausted. I've been working on the car since this morning and really for the last like two weeks. Um, but I'm heading to the drive shaft shop to pick up the drive shaft. I'm a little bit nervous because he called me about an hour ago Turn left onto Holland Drive. and said he wasn't sure if uh, he had another slip yoke because mine was slightly worn. So if he doesn't have another one, he's just gonna put the old one on, which Warren that's not good because I you know I don't want there to be any possibility I don't want to leave any of the old crap on the car that was vibrating so if the slip yoke's worn out I want a new one on there so I'm about to pull up to the drive shaft shop and pick up the drive shaft and hopefully it is good I upgraded from a two and a half up to a three and a half inch drive shaft so we'll see what happens